Our story begins with Yumegami, our protagonist who dreams of becoming a light novel author, being tended to breakfast by his little sister, Suzuka Nagami, who, for some reason, you think she hates him. To fulfill his dream, you submitted a manuscript for a prestigious author writing contest. And at school, he's finally received the results, and the first novice is Mai Himuro, the hottest girl in her school, who everyone drools over, and her classmate, who he figures he has no chances with. After that, he finally reads the results, but he's failed. Being told his work's filled with cliches, awful characters, and told to write about little sister Mo instead, which is a popularity magnet. Used distraught and later at work, tells about this to his co-worker Esaka. But she recommends using Suzuka as inspiration, but he recalls he hates her, remembering her crying in the past, but ends up thinking on her not suggestive poses anyways, which he quickly regrets. Afterwards, he buys a novel he loves, Sky Magic Guardian, from Enryu Homura, an author he admires tons. Though at home, Suzuka reproaches him for wasting his money on novels, again, though he claims they're necessary for his nurturing as a writer, and offers to lend them to her. But she reminds him she doesn't get this otaku stuff. Though afterwards, while eating, she tries telling him something, but ultimately decides not to. Later, Yu checks on the contest winner and sees it's someone named Shikai Tawano, who wrote about a little sister loving her brother, which received a ridiculous amount of praise. But then Suzuka knocks on his door, having to talk to him about the new author contest, because she reveals that she won first place. Yu's in disbelief as she explains she saw an ad for the contest in one of the novels he left in the living room, so she submitted a novel she happened to think of and won first place with it. Yu though thinks she's lying, but she shows him the manuscript, where he sees it's a romantic comedy about a little sister loving his brother, which he thinks to himself is actually amazing. But he just tells Suzuka, it's okay. But believing her now, he asks why'd she write a flirty sibling romance. But nervous, she reveals she was possessed, nervously explaining it's the only reason she'd write about a little sister who's secretly been in love with her brother for years. Which Yu, having doubts, decides to believe her, as he remembers a young Suzuka saying she hates him. Though now Yu says she wants more people to read her novel, but she faces a challenge as her school won't allow students to have part-time jobs and can't risk being found out and she's the student council president. So she asks Yu to be her stand-in. Yu though says this get in his way to become a proper author, but Suzuka begs him, as he's the only one she can ask this to. Which makes him remember of her cry in the past, so he gives in and accepts to help her. But he'll have to attend an awards ceremony soon, to his shock. So afterwards, he's now at the ceremony where he's approached by a beautiful woman with a huge cleavage, Reika Shinazaki, who claims to be her editor. But she suddenly figures he's a virgin, as thanks to that he can write a desire-heavy novel like his. But she then suddenly has him grope her breast, which shocks him, as she says, this knowledge will help him with his work, so he can grope them whenever he feels like it. Afterwards, he receives the award, but he's now overwhelmed. Though then, Shinozaki introduces him to who will illustrate the novel, the big busted blonde gal named Ando Double Peace, who he'll just call Double Peace, who's a holy demon, putting his hand between her breasts in excitement. Though another girl there notices Yu, who she claims she's seen before, so she decides to read his novel. Later, Yu returns home, exhausted, and hands Suzuka her awards. But later, Suzuka is now extremely overjoyed, because she thinks that with her novel spreading, the whole world will finally accept of her as her brother's girlfriend. Yu and Suzuka see that her novel is being praised on TV, though Suzuka constantly blushes while talking to Yu. Afterwards, Yu's at school resting, but he's suddenly approached by Mei Himuro, which startles him as she needs to talk to him outside, where she shows him his little sister's novel having busted him as Shikai Tawano, because she's the one who saw her at the awards ceremony. But asking if she's a voice actress from there, she's offended as she reveals she's a light novel author, the writer of Sky Magic Guardian, Enryu Homura, which utterly shocks you as he asks for her autograph. But she's the one who wants his autograph because she's loved his novel and has become a huge fan, claiming only a genius could have written it. But she wants to understand what makes it so good. So she's decided to study him in depth and dig up every last detail on him for it. Which you takes a sticking, but Mei won't take no for an answer, f***ing with revealing his identity to everyone to use dismay. So later she's followed him home, but Suzuka saw them together, which made her jealous and worry. And afterwards, she's followed him to his room where she's now photographing his stuff, which makes them argue. But Suzuka, nervous, enters to leave a tray of food. But she won't leave now, saying she can't leave him with another woman because he's an animal. Which makes Mai nervous at you, figuring he must be a demon to write his stuff. But at this, she decides to help by letting him have her way with him. But this makes Suzuka call the police. But Yu bangs it up and has had enough demanding Mei to go home or otherwise he'll blacklist her, making her reluctantly give in. So later, Yu's accompanying her home and then returns to his own, but finds Suzuka waiting for him, who demands an explanation. So later, he's explained what happened, but Suzuka, still jealous, decides to ask Yu of a request to tomorrow go out together, but she excuses it as to gather material for her novel, which Yu accepts. The next day, Yu receives a call from Shinazaki, but he finds out she's in the bath, which she teases him with as she's 
and begins running to quench his thirst. But this makes him angrily hang up, though now notices it's time to go out with Suzuka. But she's still in her underwear, trying outfits, which he ends up accidentally seeing to his dismay. Afterwards, they've gone out and Yu's taken her to a light novel store, as he wanted to show her light novels being a great success, with employers and customers both loving it. After that, he tries taking her somewhere else, but she suddenly gets interested in an artwork outside. But Yu sees it's from a plus 18 store, so he tries stopping Suzuka from entering, as she's oblivious to this world, but she goes in regardless, and is in shock at everything in it. But Double Piece runs into them there, who figures Suzuka is Yu's little sister, as he says he's gathering material here. But she now wants to help him with the material for the novel by showing him a daojinshin she's made, but it's full of extreme b**** which took a shock, which Suzuka ends up seeing and nervously wonders of her and you doing these old lewd things, and ends up killed by all of Double Piece's permitted explicit drawings. Afterwards, they return home, but Suzuka's still flustered by what she saw, and wonders if you'd asked to do those things with her. But thinking on how he's been surrounded by big b**ted women lately, she claims she'll become her number one girl. Flustered, Suzuka asks Yu, what is a Panchira? To his utter shock, she explains that Shinozaki via email asked her to introduce a new heroine to her novel as fan service, so she suggested to use Panchira for it too, but she doesn't know what that is. Nervous, he explains it's when someone catches a peek at a girl's panties, but she can't understand why that's fan service, so Yu explains it makes people his age happy. So flustered, she tries showing in her panties as Panchira, but Yu demands her to stop. But as she says it's necessary for her series, Yu accepts to help her. So he explains Panchira must seem natural, and instructs her to get her knees close to her chest to demonstrate, which she does, but he tries not looking as it's exposing her panties, but Suzuka gets mad as it's not Panchira if no one peeks, so he ends up looking but ends up embarrassed, but she claims it helped her understand now. Afterwards, they talk about the new heroine, though Suzuka wonders if you thinks another girl should join their story, as he says it wouldn't hurt, but Suzuka whispers that he's stupid for this, though neither Suzuka or you know what to make her about, so you decides to call for help by calling Mei and Double Peace. But wanting to know the heroine's role, Suzuka tells them that Yu told her she wouldn't have one as the story's already set without her. But at this, Mei says that the heroine must be someone the readers also root for, so she and Double Peace agree they'd write a character he finds cute, which makes Mei use this as an excuse to interview him about his taste in heroines. But Double Peace takes this as trying his f***ches, so having brought customs, she puts on a bunny girl one, which pisses Mei and Suzuka off. But she convinces Mei to try costumes as well, and wears a revealing demon one. Afterwards, they try more outfits out, but Suzuka ends up jealous. So she tries a revealing gym outfit, which leaves you flustered as they all agree he got fixated on Suzuka the most, but he assures that's false. Afterwards, they leave as Suzuka claims she's learned from this, so she goes right, but she appears bothered. Days later, Shinozaki calls you, but she's angry because the deadline for the novel's manuscripts passed, but you nervously hangs up at this as he goes check on Suzuka, but finds her sleeping on her desk, but notices her new manuscript, which he reads, finding out the new heroine's a beautiful blonde transfer student in the protagonist's class who sticks him, talks to me, and makes Otaka references, but he doesn't find this entertaining at all. But Suzuka then wakes up and finds him reading her manuscript, as he explains Shinozaki called about the deadline, but now sees she's having issues with the script, as she explains she doesn't want to write it like this, but seeing even he wanted a new heroine, she tried as well as trying to make it entertaining for everyone, but Yu reminds her his first novel was entertaining already, but she gets mad at him for this, claiming he doesn't think that, as he said it was just okay. Yu's shocked at this, but swears he was just jealous back then. But at this, Suzuka asks what he enjoy about the novel, but he can't answer, so she asks him to leave. Later, he recalls this is like in the past, when he couldn't help Suzuka and she said she hated him, but he decides he has to help now, so he analyzes her novel again, reading about the little sister and the kind older brother. But after seeing the little sister, who's earnestly in love, he realizes he doesn't want to read about another heroine. So he goes to Suzuka and tells her why he finds her work so entertaining, because it's a flirty brother-sister romantic comedy, loving how the siblings flirt and the little sister's dare dare behavior, which is why he doesn't need a new heroine that will get in the way of her, saying that he loves that little sister, which makes Suzuka gets extremely happy, as she thinks Yu wants her more than another heroine. So she immediately begins rewriting the manuscript and asks Yu to stay by her side until then as she sings Oni-chan loves his little sister, to Yu's dismay. Though later Yu's falling asleep, so Suzuka asks him to talk about the past to distract himself, but she remembers a young Suzuka crying again, as he asks himself if she thinks he's more relatable as a brother now. Afterwards, she's finally done, but Yu's fallen asleep, so Suzuka kisses him, as she proclaims, I love you, brother, 
Suzuka's at a signing event, where he's also been approached by Double Peace, Mei, and Yu disguised. Afterwards, he's finished, but suddenly, a girl in a hurry trips in front of him who's sad, seeing the events over because she claims to be Chikai Tawano's biggest fan ever, despite not recognizing Yu. But at this, he offers to sign a copy for her, revealing he's Chikai Tawano, which utterly shocks and overwhelms her as she introduces herself as Sakura Minazuki. But Yu recognizes her as a young popular voice actress as she claims she loves his novel's siblings' characters to whispering that she wishes her real brother was like his character, and that she's been losing herself in his novel so much, she's begun thinking she's the little sister herself, so she wants to be used little sister from now on. Afterwards, she leaves. But Suzuka was watching and is jealous, though she then goes hiding not wanting to see Shinazaki who'll arrive soon. But then Mei approaches Yu, as well as Shinazaki, who slips that they might be making an anime on Yu's novel soon. Though she then has to promptly leave, and Mei as well have him being summoned to an emergency meeting by her editors. The next day at school, Yu checks his own novel's manuscript, but Mei surprises him and takes notice of it, but he claims it's just homework. But then Mei has him go with her to the stairs, because she's now straight out demanding to know how does he make his writing so interesting instead of s**king him. But hearing the bell ring, Yu ends up running away from her. Though later, in another classroom, Yu notices Mei's not there. So he rushes to his main classroom and finds her, reading his manuscript. At this, Yu claims it's a friend's manuscript, which she figures because she finds it awful and not entertaining at all. But she recalls this is the same style as the papers in his trash bin, having pride on that too. So she demands to know the truth, asking if he's really Chikai Tawano. Later, now at home, Yu's explaining what happened to Suzuka, who with this, she's come up with a plan as she blushes and giggles to flirt with her in a date. Yu's shocked, but she explains it's to show Mei that Shikai Tawano is someone who absolutely adores little sisters, especially his own, which will end Mei's doubts, which Yu ends up accepting. So the next day, Mei is poorly spying on Yu while he begins his date with Suzuka, but she's later taken him to a lady's underwear shop, explaining this is the way to go if they want Mei to see them flirting. As they talk out loud about having him choose his sister's underwear, and as Mai finds in a brook, he tries choosing bare panties and imagines her wearing them, but then sees a very skimpy one, which he also pictures her on, but figures it's too mature for her. So he chooses one with stripes, picturing her with it too. Afterwards, they continue their date while Mai follows them all day. And as they consider their missions a success, Double Peace suddenly runs into them and asks them to go shopping with Mei as well, who she's seen there and brings over. As Mei says, what a coincidence. So then, as Double Peace figures you'll need material for swimsuit events, she takes them to try swimsuits on and wants him to pick their swimsuits to know his is. But Minazuki suddenly runs into them as well and introduces herself as Yu's little sister, which pisses Mei and Suzuka off. But regardless, they all then try swimsuits on for him. And wanting to know which one he finds the best, he claims Suzuka's the cutest, making her giggle. Afterward, they all accompany him home as they talk about having a beach party. But at this, Mei comes up with a plan to uncover his secret by spending an entire day with him by inviting everyone to her beach house. The girls and Yu take a train to Mei's beach house, as she claims she'll uncover Yu's secret for sure now. But Yu, wondering why is she being more direct now, remembers her emergency meeting with her editors and asks if something happened there. But Mai nervously claims nothing happened there. Though then, they finally arrive at the beach, where in Mei's private each, they enjoy themselves in their swimsuits. Double Double Peace then approaches Yu because to gather material, she wants him to rub sunscreen on her skin. But Suzuka sees this and wants him to rub it on her first, for his writing, as he's his little sister. But Mei and Minazuki also want this. So he ends up first rubbing it on Double Peace, and Mei, and Minazuki rubbed herself on him. And then it's Suzuka's turn, as he nervously rubs her back and she tries holding and moans. But Double Peace is erratically narrating this, which distracts him and makes him drop the entire bottle of sunscreen on Suzuka's entire body, so she now has to go shower. Though Yu notices she forgot her clothes, so he goes and drops outside the first floor's shower and goes to the second floor one. But he finds Suzuka there but as he nervously tries explaining this is a misunderstanding, but ends up staring for too long, so he rushes out, but ends up falling down the stairs. Afterwards, they go to a festival where they spend the evening at. Though afterwards, Mai has you follow her to go to the fireworks show by going into a forest. But she's tricked him because she wants to know his secret at any cost, trying to s**t him now. But as you stops her, she now comes up with an idea. He'll write his manuscript in front of her. So later he's done it, and she's found it excellent. As you remembers how he and Suzuka foresaw this. So he memorized Suzuka's manuscript ahead of time. But Mei finds odd that he was writing this while looking emotionless. But then Minazuki and Double Peace come in, saying to go sleep, which distracts Mei, to their relief. Though there's only four beds, so we'll have to share one with you. But Suzuka exclaims she'll do it, being her little sister. So later, she sleeps with him. But you can't sleep, while Suzuka's dreaming on him and even hugs him in her sleep, making him freak out and escape. But in the living room, he finds Mei outside, 
Sugu tries asking again and she reveals her novel was greenlit for Nanaim, but her new editor's incredibly blunt, having told her her characters are extremely weak and fears her series will be cancelled. Which is why she wants to know Yu's secret, being sure she'll find an answer in it. But Yu becomes silent at this, which makes Mai pissed off and leaves angered. Yu, though, decides to help, so he goes ask Suzuka about this, who's been waiting for him, annoyed for having left. But he wants to know how does she write her characters, but she doesn't know, claiming she feels possessed, like she becomes her characters when writing. Which surprises Yu, as he's never tried that approach before, so he decides to try being like Chikai Tawano, and suddenly hugs Suzuka and caresses her head, telling her he loves her more than anything in the world, which leaves her shocked and makes her pass out. But Yu now realizes this is how one writes a character. So he goes to Mei's room and teaches her Chekai Tawano's secret, the ability to become your character as you write, explaining the manuscript she saw in class was a failed one he carried as a reminder, so he can become a professional writer. So she takes his advice and decides to start working on her novel now. After that, Yu finds Suzuka outside her room, though she's not worried anymore as he said he loves her more than anything. Though Yu goes work on his novel as well, but Suzuka decides to write alongside him too because she wants to be near him, for her series to inhabit her character. While Yu thanks her for her help, Suzuka cheerily tends to Yu being extremely happy ever saying that he loves her, but Yu claims he was just completely inhabiting Chikai Tawano's character back then and doesn't actually love her like that, which utterly pisses off Suzuka. Afterwards, they're at a doujinshi convention where everyone in cosplays are helping Double Peace sell her doujinshi. Though, Mai finds her work too perfected, recommending her to tone it down, but Double Peace claims to love degrading too much. But then two girls approach Double Peace as the younger of them introduces herself as Haruna Kanzaka, and with her sister, Akino, they form a group ambivalence, who the otakus they recognize as group with great doujins with great sales. But Haruna claims she's Double Peace's rival, and seeing her obscene doujins, she insults her for still sticking with the styles, saying she lowered her tone, but Double Peace doesn't really want to do that. But then, Haruna mentions how she's now illustrating a creepy light novel about a little sister, which she calls a crappy yawn fest. But Suzuka gets pissed as well as Yu, revealing he's the writer and wonders if her work is even good enough to talk big. But Aruna, at this, abruptly decides to challenge him to a competition. They'll both create dodgins based on his light novel, and they'll gauge which one's better by reviews at the next con. Yu won't accept, but Suzuka suddenly does. While Haruna's condition is that if she wins, the old piece will do anything she asks her to do. But Suzuka's is that if they win, they'll acknowledge the novel as a proper sibling romance story. And if they lose to ambivalence, Shikai Tawana will retire from writing novels for good, leaving you shocked. So later, they go double plays a department, which is filled with obscene stuff, where she shows them one of ambivalence's jujinshis, which they sadly find spectacular. But asking how she knows the ambivalence girls, Double Peace reveals that two years ago in a con, Haruna stopped by her stand and revealed she was a massive fan of her art, which even inspired her to start in drawing and form ambivalence shortly after that. But for some reason after that, their relationship became rockier. But despite still considering them friends, she'll be sure to beat them after Haruna insulted them. But for that, she needs material for it. So she requests Yu and Suzuka to act it out. So Yu ends up tied up in box with Suzuka wearing kinky thin clothes with a whip and double piece, drooling over all this has Suzuka punish you. Though, they later agree it was a mistake. Afterwards, Yu wonders on what to make their doujinshi about, but at this, Suzuka nervously says to make it about siblings flirting at a school festival. Yu actually likes the idea, so Suzuka says to go to a fact-finding mission at her school's cultural festival. So the next day, he's accompanying her there. But here's everyone's talking of them as lovers, to his dismay and confusion, as Suzuka first explains she got too excited in her classroom, but then tries claiming they're just baseless rumors. Regardless, they then spend the day in the festival. But suddenly, Suzuka's approached by theater club members as their leads suddenly got sick mid-play and are asking he and Yu to play a prince and princess, who will declare their love to each other. Suzuka flusters at confessing to Yu, but straight out accepts. So afterwards, they play their parts as Suzuka's character confesses to the prince at last, but as his little sister, by improvising. So Yu's also signaled to improvise to be shocked. So he declares that he can't return her feelings now as his feelings can't measure to hers, but is overjoyed hearing he loves her so asks her for more time to answer, but promises that they'll always be together, forever, as they hold hands and the audience roars in applause. After the play, Suzuka praises his improv while he claims it just kinda slipped out naturally, but this makes Suzuka think if it could be how he truly feels. But they're suddenly approached by Akino Kanzaka. Akino reveals she was invited by a friend, but is also there to apologize to them. Battle Haruna suddenly shows up, but seeing Yu, she teases him that he'll lose, especially with Double Peace's current art. But as Yu asks what's her beef with her, she angrily reveals she hates she's wasting her talent. But as she gets aggressive, Suzuka defends Yu. But he holds her to calm her down, but she flusters at it, because he's touching her breasts, to his shock. 
Afterwards, back home, Suzuka reckons she'll finish the manuscript for the doujinshi in some hours. Though, you notice it as she's spacing out, but she claims it's nothing. But the next day, you see she's caught a fever, as she explains it happened shortly after going to her room. So Yu now takes care of her, but she now wants to change clothes, instructing Yu to choose a pair of underwear he likes for her. Yu's shocked at this and nervous and ends up imagining Suzuka and underwear to his dismay, but then sees her with her top uncovered, as she's asking him to wipe her body, which he reluctantly ends up doing, which makes her moan. Though, after that, she wants to finish writing the scenario despite feeling awful, but Yu won't let her despite her insistence. So at this, she asks him a favor instead, to write the scenario for her, being the only other person who went fact-finding to the cultural festival. Though Yu's hesitant not being a real writer, Suzuka manages to convince him. So afterwards, Double Peace meets with him in his room where he plans on finishing the manuscript, as she shows him drafts of their doujinshi, but they're again explicit artwork. But Yu won't accept this now to her shock because he needs it to appeal to a general audience. Double Peace though looks concerned, but ultimately accepts to redraw it for him. While Yu now tries finishing the manuscript, but after trying to make it appealing for everyone, he ends up finding it boring, double piece, and shows him her new, more appealing drawings. But despite being less obscene, the quality is now very poor. But double piece suddenly begins crying, and shows him her old art, explaining that when she first found a rouge, it led her to work hard to draw what she really loved, which is brutal bondage scenes. Though, Suzuka then comes in, but Yu has her go rest again. But wanting to know how the scenario is coming up, Yu won't talk. So Suzuka tells him to write the scenario however he wants it to be, with the love he feels for her work in mind. That way, it'll be the best thing ever. Thanks to this, he was apologized to Double Peach because he's now realized instead of appealing to everyone, it must do what they love which motivates her at last. Days later, the Khans now arrived, and they've finished their doujinshi as well as ambivalence. Though seeing each other's work, Haruna sees Double Peach's drawings are worse than usual, claiming they'll stop them. But Akino actually appears surprised by it. Regardless, they then head back as the con finally opens, and they begin selling their books. But Mei worries, seeing ambivalence is getting tons of sales, which could lead to them winning by default. Yu worries at this. But suddenly, Menazuki shows up because she wanted to buy their work, as the hype for Double Piece's new doujinshi is through the roof in social media. Which Yu sees it's true, and Haruna, angrily, does too. But Akino then has her seize Double Piece's doujinshi again, and Haruna appears to actually love it. Later, the cons ended, and Double Piece's doujinshi sold out, while Ambivalence's hasn't. But as Haruna tries giving excuses, Akino apologizes, knowing they've been bested by reviews, and also apologizes for not stopping Haruna earlier, having her apologize too. And Akino reveals this was all due to Haruna's intense love for Double Piece's work, because she heavily admires Double Piece, but it's mad her niche won't let her reach a wider audience, as she wishes the world would discover her art. As Haruna reveals she planned on making Double Piece to draw something mainstream if they'd won the contest for it. But Double Piece claims she finds Haruna's talent better than hers, and hopes to continue being rivals, which Haruna, joyfully crying, accepts, while Akino praises Yu for his scenario having found his fame justified, which surprises Yu as she was praising his own writing. Suzuka's novel is getting an anime, and Shinozaki calls Yu to meet with its director soon, alongside Suzuka, knowing he can't let go of her. Though he finds out Shinozaki's in the bath again, scrubbing her breasts. Though then, Minazuki suddenly calls him because she's outside his house. After letting her in, she explains she had a fight with her family, so she ran away from home and wants to stay with you for a while. You shocked at first and tries refusing, but ultimately gives in and accepts. Though he now worries about how Suzuka will react to this, and she just happens to knock on his door, asking why she just heard a woman's voice. So he explains he was mimicking his novel's heroine voice, which she finds creepy, but believes him. After that though, Mei calls Yu, but Minazuki's jealous at it as Mei also becomes jealous, hearing he's with Minazuki, but Yu just hangs up. And Double Peace then calls him, saying she sent him illustrations he can use as material for Jaasteris quirking off later. But she also hears a woman with him and gets concerned, but Yu nervously hangs up again. Exhausted, he says to go sleep. But Minazuki suddenly begins changing in front of him to his shock, so he decides to wait outside. But then, Akino also calls him, who wants to hear his opinion on her work but saying that she's prepared to receive harsh feedback from him, as in binding her with ropes and whip her. But Haruna hears this and gets mad at you for it. But she suddenly also hears a woman, Minazuki, with him, blushing as she figures he's going to sleep with her, which makes Akino say she's also prepared to sleep with him as well. Yuvo then hangs up but can't seem to find Minazuki now, until she suddenly pulls him under his sheets, hugging him way too close to his dismay. The next day, you and Suzuka go meet with their anime's director, though Suzuka notices you appears tired for some reason. Shidozaki then introduces them to Dejin Midare, the producer and the director, Itsuki Sakurada. And as Sakurada claims he absolutely adores his work, you introduces Suzuka, 
as his little sister. But Sakurada appears interested at this, and now wanting Yu's thoughts to reflect in the anime, he suddenly asks multiple questions about little sister Mo, like why is he attracted to it, and what does he think of its morality? But you can't actually answer this. Sakurada, surprised, ends up asking if he's even touched his sister, but Yu claims that line can't be crossed which absolutely disappoints Sakurada, claiming Yu doesn't understand little sister Mo. So he ends up deciding he'll use his own interpretations for their enime to their shock. Later, Suzuka's pissed at this, but Shinazaki has given them another chance to convince Sakurada again next week, so she decides Yu'll have to become a real little sister lover by then with a special training. But at home, Yu feels he forgot something important. As they're met with Minasuki, wearing only an apron, to their shock, and Suzuka's anger, as Yu and Minazuki then apologize to her and explain what happened. But as Suzuko worries Minazuki's family's worried about her, Minazuki actually claims she told her parents she'd be staying in her friend's house because she actually fought with her older brother, who she finds a nuisance. At this, Suzuka now would like to help her but claims they'll be busy because Yu has to learn to become a little sister lover. But he nervously explains it's so he can write better. But Minazuki also decides to help him with it because she's also his little sister. Yu worries if he'll even like little sister Mo, but figures he must work hard for Suzuka. Though, Minazuki asks Yu if he wants to be on her radio show, to their shock. Afterwards, he and Suzuka actually attend it, as Minazuki interviews Shikai Tawano and his little sister. As we see that earlier, Suzuka tried rejecting her, but Yu accepted, wanting to train by showing the audience he loves little sister Mo, so they'll have to act with Suzuka by flirting with each other which flustered her. So, in the present, Minazuki asks him questions related to the novel, but he ends up answering them all with that he loves little sister so much, as well as his own sister, saying he flirts and dreams of her. But Minazuki begins looking worried, as Suzuka flusters and Yu puts her on his lap to replenish his little sister energy, smelling her hair too. Though after that, he wonders if that was even real little sister Mo, but he then notices Sakurada there, who appears to be staring at inside the recording booth. But he's startled by Yu, as Sakurada nervously claims he's there for no reason at all, and just leaves. After that, Minazuki, Suzuka, and Yu head home, but they find Mei and Double Peace outside, who are there to hang out. But wondering why Minazuki's with them, she says she's living with you right now to their shock. So afterwards, they're explained Minazuki's situation, and that she's also helping you. But they also now want to help him too, so Minazuki comes up with them all pretending to be a different type of little sister for you, and go on a date with him tomorrow, which they find wonderful. But Suzuka's jealous. So the next day, they go to a theme park, though Akino and Haruna are there as well as you told Akino about this in a call, and Haruna is there to protect Akino from you. But you has the feeling he's been in this theme park before, as we see young you comforting a crying Suzuka who gotten lost but he can't remember. Afterwards, they draw the little sister types lots, and after deciding with rock, paper, scissors, Mei first dates him as a cooter, though Suzuka decides to accompany him too to oversee his training, but they're in a haunted house, which spooks them both. Afterwards, he now dates Double Peace, who's a lowly dare, sitting on him and ironically eating a churro. And later, Haruna's at Sundir while Akino and Yander, who bites him to express her love, making Suzuka jealous as they take a selfie. Though then, it's Suzuka's turn to date him now, where she's a derridaer, so she's now clingy to him. Way too clingy. So you've asked to let go, but she has a request for that, to call her cute. Which he does multiple times, making her fluster. Though he wonders why is his heart pounding so hard by this. Later, Suzuka's goes to the bathroom, while Yugo's find the girls. But he suddenly remembers, this is where she made a promise to Suzuka when younger. Though then, he sees Minazuki being annoyed by his sister, so he protects her from him, making him leave. Minazuki thanks him, though she meant to ask him why does he want to learn about little sister Mo, having written an amazing story like his novel. And though Yu tries lying, Minazuki knows he's lying and wants him to say the truth, to not bottle it up. So he explains what truly happened, having been told he doesn't get little sister Mo, and has to out-argue that person. But Minazuki actually believes Yu already understands it, explaining, she used to be like that too. But meanwhile, Suzuka, worried of the other girls, decides she'll confess to Yu at last. While Minazuki explains to Yu that her brother has a sister complex, but was rather irritating to her for years, but that recently his complex got worse, so she tried confronting him about it, but found his room covered with her face with her on his laptop saying, I love you on repeat, which is why, after fighting with him, she ran from home. So for years, she loved little sister Mo, but reveals that, thanks to you, she now understands the genre, thanks to his novel, as it made her find it endearing now. So from her experience, she can clearly see that you actually understand little sister Mo shocking him. But suddenly, she says he's kind, which is why she loves him. But Suzuka heard this, and runs away in tears. He tries following her, but Minazuki stops him, awaiting an answer. 
But you just apologizes. That what Minazuki says it was just an act for the contest, which you ends up believing as he chases after Suzuka. That what Minazuki figures she can't beat the real deal after all. And young you find Suzuka crying on a bench by a fountain as she gets relieved she's found him. While in the present, Suzuka ended up running to the same place, but tears up after seeing Minazuki confess to you, regretting not confessing before. You meanwhile can't get a hold of her. But thanks to Minasuki, now realizes that he's always known how much he loved little sister Mo, and just didn't want to admit it, in fear Suzuka could hate him. But now he's distraught, having hurt her. But then he remembers the spot he found her at years ago. So he goes there and finally finds her. So he tries explaining Minazuki's confession was an act, but Suzuka won't believe him. But he decides to clear his mistake, and reveals that he's always loved little sister Mo with all his heart, and even got into light novels thanks to it, calling it the best archetype, which drives him wild. Suzuka flusters as you explains he was just trying to convince himself all this time that he didn't like it, so she wouldn't hate him even more. But now, he just wants to say the truth to not hurt her anymore. Suzuka, though claims she'd never hate him for that, but is now pissed, because she thought it was all just her, but is happy now that he feels the same way she does. Though she then recalls this is just like that day long ago, where they made a promise. Later back home you can't sleep worrying about meeting with Sakurada tomorrow, but he finds Minazuki awake too. So they talk about the guy he'll argue with tomorrow, as he reveals it's their Anime's director, Itsuki Sakurada. Minazuki appears surprised at this, but suddenly decides to go sleep to use confusion. While the next day, he finds a note from Minazuki, who explains she's left, having to do something back home. Regardless, later, you and Suzuka face Sakurada at last. Though Sakurada's uninterested in what you has to say, you claims he won't allow revisions, having remember how much he loves little sister Mo now and claims Sakurada is the one who doesn't understand it instead, wanting to hear his reasoning for it. So Sakurada explains he believes that only those can express their eternal desire, even after imposing themselves on their little sisters, can say they love little sister Mo. But you at this, claims Sakurada doesn't get little sister Mo at all, because he's only thinking on his own desires, overlooking the little sister's feelings, as he should only act if the little sister wants him to. Sakurada, pissed, finds this is nonsense, but you suddenly hugs Suzuka. Claiming that when your real little sister likes you, that's what proves you understand little sister Mo. But Sakurada is now frustrated over this, and won't accept it, claiming he'll absolutely rework the anime to his liking. But then Mei and Double Peace barge in, as well as Minuzaki, who turns out is Sakurada's little sister, who's very pissed at him for annoying you, so Sakurada promptly apologizes. While Minasuki explains to you she wanted to catch her brother earlier, but he'd left already, so she followed him here. So afterwards, Sakurada explains he knew Minazuki was living with you after running from home, and on top of seeing him so happy with Suzuka, he got incredibly jealous and angry, which led to his actions. But that he actually, thanks to Yu's novel, realized he must love his little sister in different light, which is why he's been behaving the way Minazuki saw lately. So Sakurada apologizes to you and to Minazuki, while he calls you the king of little sister Mo as he hasn't let go of Suzuka this entire time, making Suzuka blush, and you embarrassed, letting her go as she flusters. Afterwards, the girls are with you about to leave as Akino and Haruna also arrive, because Akino insisted on coming to aid you. So they all accompany you to a park, though there Suzuka talks about how you loves little sisters. But you says to not get the wrong idea as he'll never look at her that way, which she understands but makes sure he loves the genre, which blushingly he affirms, which she's happy with. Time later, you helps Asaka at her work, but he then sees Suzuka in her new school uniform, as she asks, how does it look on her? Which he says it looks good, as they both blush. Yeah,